1715 there was an uprising of the free men, the Jacobites. The brave men not only of the Highlands, but the Lowlands, Northumberland, and even our brothers as far south as Manchester. The uprising ended in defeat at the Battle of Preston, and many Jacobite leaders were executed in London for high treason. Others were impeached for inciting the people for rebellion against the, the state. As for the commoners, well, many of which were sent to the Americas and sold on as slaves to work on the colonial plantations. The initial success of the uprising had the government on edge and they brought in the 1716 Disarming Act which banned the holding of weapons by Highlanders. This law was intended to bring law and order to the land of the brave. This law proved to be completely ineffectual as the Highlanders made allies of the Spaniards and they were armed to the teeth at the Battle of Glenshiel. Despite defeat, the Highlanders were suspected of concealing weapons as you would, while the traitor clans, as in the Campbells, remained unarmed. This led to the government strategically building four military barracks to impose law and order on the wild highlands. One of those barracks is Ruthven Barracks. The barracks were completed in 1721 to impose law and order on the highlands of Scotland. You can see standing in the middle of the parade square, two buildings more or less identical on each side. Each building is, was said to be built for 60, 60 soldiers. I can even go in and have a wee look at one. As you can see, chimneys are still in place, three floors on each building, and the external side of the wall. It's a rather grand building. And you can only imagine what the locals felt when this was getting built. Now, within the Balleric walls itself, there are a couple of rooms that are quite significant. So, first room, which I'm sure the soldiers would have head off to more or less every day, get themselves some nice bread and some alcoholic beverages, of course. The building itself is in quite extraordinary condition still, not gonna lie. But as for men like myself, we'd never have been at home here. I want you all to remember that this is not Scotland versus England. This is the free men willing to fight for their, for their beliefs in a righteous cause. And if any of these men were happened to be captured, this is where they would be.
Extract of a letter from Lord Justice Clerk Thomas Fletcher to John Marquis of Tweeddale, Secretary of State for Scotland, commenting on the political allegiances of the clans, 16th of September, 1745. I shall signify to your Lordship in plain words what authorities I desire to be sent down to empower the well-affected loyal to appear in the legal way for the defence of His Majesty's person and government. And to explain myself fully on this head, your Lordship will be pleased to reflect on the state of this country at present at the beginning of the rebellious insurrection, which began about six weeks ago, and at this hour is holding in dread the capital of this part of the kingdom. Scotland may be divided into two parts, the one disarmed and the other unarmed. By the former I mean the Highlands, and by the latter the Lowlands. The former produces as good militia as any in Europe. The latter, with which your Lordship and I are most acquainted, are neighbour-like, but little accustomed to and the use of arms, while they are employed in a military manner. The Highlands, again, may be divided into three classes. First, what I should call the Whig clans, who have always bore the character since these names and distinctions were among us. Of your sort, your Lordship, and everyone acquainted with the country knows the Chief are the Campbells, the Sutherlands, the Grants, the Monroes and the Mackays. The second class are the clans still professedly Jacobite and who at this moment are giving proof of it, viz. the Camerons, the Macdonalds of Clan Ronald, Kepok and Glengarry, and a few more of lesser note. The third class is made up of those who were engaged in the late rebellion, but whereof the chiefs now profess and practice submission and obedience to the government. Among these may be accounted the Mackenzies, Macleods, D. Gordons, Macdonalds of the Isles, the behaviour of which last has been most exemplary and meritorious on this occasion. By an act of the first of the late king entitled an act to the more effectual security of the peace of the Highlands, the whole Highlanders without distinction are disarmed forever and forbid to use or bear arms under penalties. This act has been found by experience to work quite the contrary effect from what was intended by it, and in reality proves a mean for a more effectual disturbing of the peace of the Highlands and the rest of the kingdom, and his majesty's government by and through those highlands. The cause of this operation is now plainly visible, for all the disaffected clans retain their arms and either concealed them at the fact of disarming or have provided themselves since, at the same time that the dutiful and well-affected clans have truly submitted to the measure of the government and act of the legislature, and are still disarmed or have no quantity of firearms amongst them. The fatal effects of this difference at the time of a rebellious insurrection may be very obvious and but too clearly seen, and by us in the country felt at this hour, I pray God they be felt no further south. By that disarming act as it stands, there is still room left for arming occasionally, even the highland or prohibited counties, and the method reserved or expected from the prohibition is when by His Majesty's order and out of his arsenal the people are called out and armed by the Lord's Lieutenant of the counties, then they may lawfully bear and use such arms. During such number of days and space of time, as shall be expressed in His Majesty's order. As a fortress, Ruthven Barracks proved to be exceptionally strong. In 1745, there was a failed attempt by the Jacobites to try and seize the barracks. Six months later, on the way to Claude, they came with some big balls to blast holes in the walls to seize the barracks for the people of Scotland. After the defeat of Culloden, the Jacobites regrouped at Ruthven Barracks and awaited word for the Bonnie Prince, their leader at the time. Word came to say that he was fleeing the country and I quote, may every man seek safety in the best way he can. After which, the barracks were set ablaze, never to be restored. And I can sit here in the prison cell, knowing that the brave were once here. Being a free man, isn't he free? <laughs> Isn't he free at all? Hi, hi. Well, that's it for today, guys. 
I do hope that you enjoyed our wee trip today. Don't disarm yourself, get yourself some weapons because they're going to take everything off you. You will only be allowed a kitchen knife soon, do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, hi, and if you have enjoyed my video, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, subscribe if you have any. And uh, aye, there's a wee link, buy me a brew if you want to do that, that'd be pretty cool. So aye, cheerio till next time. Alright. <laughs> that freak you at me. <laughs> Sorry.